Everybody do the flutter. Double, triple, quad, flutter. Everybody do the flutter. And uh, I've done some scientific uh, equations and some manipulations in my mind, and I've uh, come up with this amazing technique to get me down the river a little quicker when I'm uh, walking with these pins. It's called a little flutter motion. The flutter motion basically stabilizes my motion from left to right at 180 degrees. And when I do that, I can actually maintain my speed, but yes, increase it at the same time. Manipulating the water in such a manner is, is something that's very, very helpful for fishing, as you can see. I've really got the flutter going now, man. Look at me going. Oh, sometimes you can change sides and do the flutter. I'm going to do the flutter now. Come on. And you actually get a boost once in a while. Like, see, if you, if you double flutter, you get a little boost, like a little jump. So double flutter. Everyone, come on. Everyone do the tap, 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 triple flutter. Okay, ready? Tap, tap, tap. But you get too high sometimes if you don't have a, a life jacket on. It gets a little dangerous, so just keep it to a double flutter, and you'll be okay. Double flutter. Okay, here we go. Move it. Welcome to The Fishing Musicians with your host, musician, and lover of fishing, Mr. Glenn Ferguson, and special guest host, musician, and comedian, Mr. Jimmy Flynn. You know, people everywhere in the whole world love good music, and everywhere you go, people love to go fishing. So join us for the next 30 minutes as we combine the best of both on The Fishing Musicians. The Fishing Musicians is brought to you by FergusonAudio.ca, your total marketing specialist. Now, make any advertising campaign idea a reality with the experience, facilities, and service you can rely on growing to serve you better. Welcome to The Fishing Musicians, folks. My name is Glenn Ferguson, your host, and this week we take you down memory lane with scenes from Jimmy Flynn's Tales and Trails Adventures. This week, Jimmy is in Labrador, Canada, fishing for Arctic char with his good friend, Bob Welsh. In the last portion of our show, folks, we head to the Restigus River for some world-class spring Atlantic salmon fishing. So stay tuned. There's a whole bunch of fun on this show. Welcome to the Fishing Musician. Hey folks, welcome to The Fishing Musicians. My name is Glenn Ferguson, your host, and we continue with our Fishing Musicians adventures. This week is going to be a little different. Fortunately for many of you, you're probably not going to see much of me in this episode, but you will see lots of Jimmy Flynn. We're going to take a journey in time back to the Tales and Trails adventures that Jimmy Flynn produced a number of years ago to Labrador, Canada with his co-host Bob Wells for some great char fishing. Stay tuned, a little bit of music, a little bit of comedy, Lots of great fishing for you hardcore anglers. Hi folks, I'm Jim Flynn, and this week we're off with my good buddy Bob Welsh for another great fishing adventure. This time, we're after Arctic char. I've been Bob's guest a number of times in Western Canada where we fish for king salmon and steelhead, and ridden back into wilderness areas after trophy moose and elk. So it's my turn to play host, and when I offered Bob the opportunity to experience some of the finest char fishing in the world, <laughs> he jumped at the chance. We're heading for Char Lake, operated by Last Frontier Fishing Lodges in Labrador, Canada. This is the wild and wondrous land, covering nearly 110,000 square miles. The lake, stream-fed and nearly five miles long, is a two and a half hour flight northeast from Goose Bay. As the plane passes over the lodge, Bob sees a large dark patch at the river's mouth that turns out to be thousands of Arctic char. Bob and I both know if the fish are thick enough to be recognized from the air, we're in for an exciting trip. Excited as we are, the pilots told us that these wispy clouds are being pushed by a storm front and to expect strange wind action that could help or hinder our fly fishing. What a beautiful evening, eh? Yeah. No telephones, no cars. Another another hour or so it's gonna be dead calm here. Yeah. How's everything up in British Columbia, Bob? Good. You get some big salmon out there too, will you? Yeah. What would they be now? Spring salmon. Is that what you call your tie? Yeah. Well tie's spring salmon over thirty pounds. We've got, uh, well, we've got quite a few over 30 so far. We've got one 47 and a couple in the low 40s. If the fish should bite as good as these flies do around here. <laughs> this one gets down there quick enough, but it, uh, they look at it, 
follow it, but they don't hit it. I've had two or three follow it up every time, but they aren't real aggressive towards it. I think I'll change to a, something a little different here. Even though there are hundreds of charwood in casting distance, finding the right flies sometimes takes some experimenting. This evening, most of our fish are taken on flies with brown hackles and a silver body. These all the great trips you take me on, Bob. It's a pleasure to have you up here in Labrador. You can't go any farther than this, all the way from Vancouver Island. No. Yeah, it'd be a pleasure to be here and watch you clean the fish for a change. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works, isn't it? Whoa! <laughs> I didn't even bring a knife, in case you were wondering. <laughs> I got mine, buddy. I'm treating you this time. Oh! It's like fixing up the top of the profit or a big king Sam we're after. Boy, these fish put up a great fight. Oh. It's a good chair, this one, Bob. There are two types of Arctic char. The freshwater landlocked varieties are found throughout the Northwest Territories, while these sea-run char are found from Newfoundland north to the Arctic Ocean. Oh, yeah? <laughs> My wrist is going to fall off. What line is that I got there? It was right there in front of you. You must be able to see them in the water, can't you? Yeah. They got us surrounded. Again. <laughs> <laughs> The red coat of Quebec and the western Dolly Varden are considered subspecies of the Arctic char. Char looks something like a brookie, but their tail fin is more forked, and their back is usually olive green to deep blue. The males at breeding time develop a hook on their lower jaw, with white bellies changing to orange red. Isn't that Bob? Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Yeah, he's colored up nice, isn't he? This one's got a big hook on him, too. Yeah? Big male, eh? Yeah, big male. Got one, Bob? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> We've always made it a point to limit our catch to the odd trophy Either. fish or one for our dinner. I've hauled in a nice fish, and now it's time to see how Bob's making out. Whoa! <laughs> you ever <nail> it. <laughs> Our first double. Oh, I got a nice fish here, Bobby. Well, that's a dandy, eh? Oh, yeah. My arm's gonna fall off here. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of this one. That's a dandy, eh? Boy. Yeah. It's a nice fish. Oh, geez, this guy's just a screaming over here. Ooh. I'm to get it. Stay on. There he goes. <laughs> And that ferry boat from Halifax to Dartmouth runs every half hour in the hour. I got down there last Wednesday about two minutes after one. Ferry boat would go 10 feet from the dock. I had a big meeting going on in Dartmouth, didn't want to miss it. So I figured there could be running jump, I could make it. So I flew through the air, landed deck of the ferry boat, tumbled on the corner of my head. I was real pleased with myself. I said to the guy beside me, hey, I made it! He said, you shouldn't have bothered, the boat's coming in. <laughs> West, I was out to Regina. You know, it's so flat in Regina, a guy could escape from prison, you could see him running for three days. <laughs> <laughs> and a funny sense of humor out there, too. I went to a nightclub, they wouldn't let me in because never had a tie on. 
So to the car and get the jumper cables out the car, tied them around my neck. I'm back and said to the guy, can you come in now? He said, sure you can, but don't start nothing. <laughs> don't go away, we'll be right back. Cross over again. <laughs> Uh. Whew. <laughs> you ever see the likes in your life? Mm. Oh, what a dandy, Bob. Good one, eh? Look at the size of that fish. Oh, look at this guy. Holy mackerel, now there's a chair. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Look at the size of that fish. Mr. Man, buddy. I was going to show you mine. <laughs> <laughs> what a big fish. You keep that thing, huh? Get him down this. That's where you're going. <laughs> you got your wall hanger, did you? Well, this probably ain't no slow jacket on here either, buddy. Boy, oh boy, I didn't think they were that big here. Look at the ones you catch aren't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice fish too. Yeah, not like that one though. Bob's fish is big enough to mount, so it'll end up in the wall in his lodge in British Columbia. These fish are known to reach three feet in length and weigh up to 26 pounds, so this is definitely a trophy fish. What a dandy fish, Bob. Very big guy. He's a nice one. Oh, let's grab him by the tail. Oh man, alive! Look at the size of this chair. Huh? Oh, oh, what a beautiful fish! I don't know whether you say that's a Jim Dandy or that's a Dandy Jim. <laughs> or it's a Bob, it's a Bob Dandy today. <laughs> He's wow. a nice one, didn't he? What a big fish! Boy, he's pretty, eh? Just kind of orangey pink on the side and the belly here. Oh yeah. Oh, well, that's your wall hanger, Bob. Yeah. <sighs> Bad enough when Bob catches the biggest fish at his camps, but when he catches the biggest fish at mine. I'm gonna get my camera and get a picture of that. Oh, up in the high, Bob. Oh, nice picture. There. I got another one, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my picture. Got to come up again. See ya. There he goes. Uh, last. Ah, gee. Okay, let's go, Bob. The next morning's mist hasn't even burned off the lake, and the chair are waiting for us again. Today we've moved closer to the outlet of the lake which is only three miles from the ocean. Some big ones out there right in front of us here. You only have to look into the crystal water to see Char. And if you lose the odd one, there's only a thousand more to take its place. Whoa. We caught so many Char that we lost count, and Bob's got another one on. When I promised him unbelievable fishing, I know he thought I was exaggerating, as we fishermen are inclined to do. But I admit now that every word I told him was the truth. I just bunk here, they. Get out of that line, buddy. <laughs> We're ending with a little silver in the body, right? Hmm. See you later. <laughs> well, I probably won't his, see him later. His big brother, Bob. Yeah? The little brown ones with the silver bodies, they've eaten every one of them on here. What are you putting on? What's that? What are you going to use? Same thing. 
just a little streamer. I don't even know the name of it. A squirrel tail on the butt and a silver body. Flies aren't too bad this time of day, Bob. No. Some of the flies we've been using were made up by a friend of mine, Bill Williams. He fished up here last year and made these flies especially for this lake. And I gotta tell you, he made them up good. Okay, buddy, say your prayers. The fish we've been catching today have only been in fresh water for a short period of time. So their vibrant color and the clear, clean lake water makes it easy to follow the action. The longer a chair spends in fresh water, the darker their colors become. Where did that wind come from? The lab would always five minutes, eh? Whoa! <laughs> Another one head down the lake. Well, I wouldn't walk after him. <laughs> That's what they put that reel on there for. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got much to say about it. <laughs> Bob's been having the time of his life here. It really doesn't make much difference where you cast, there seems to be a fish waiting for your fly. More often than not, both of us have a fish in the line at the same time. Now that's great fishing. What a battle with that fellow, Bob. Yeah? What'd you do with him? <laughs> I had him right in my hands and he jumped right in my arms. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice fish. But there's more, right? Lots more where he came from. My dad got loved in the old people's home now, right? And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting on a stool. Every once in a while, my dad started leaning this way, right? <laughs> okay. And the nurse went home and push him up, and they start leaning the other way. <laughs> the nurse went home and push him up, and they start leaning the other way, right? <laughs> this went on all day long. My brother went to see him last Sunday. He said, Dad, handling the old people's home. He said, Son, the people are real friendly, the food's real good. But you see that nurse over there? She won't let me eat first. <laughs> You can see schools coming in up to the river all the time here around us. Sea run Arctic chars start moving into rivers in late July, but they spend some time in the estuaries before proceeding upstream to fresh water. They spawn every two years in late September and throughout October, laying their eggs in gravel beds in six to 15 feet of water and in the shallow pools below rapids. Well, pound for pound, you can't beat them, can you? I guess it's because they're only found in the north that Arctic char haven't yet become a popular sport fish. But if you ever get the chance, as you've seen today, you'd be crazy to turn down the opportunity to hook one of these fighting fish. A lot of people, Bob, don't know about char fishing, you know? He's got about four half hitches on him here. There we go. Now, this guy is going for lunch. Nice fresh fish. Mm. Nice cromer. It's so, still pretty silver. Who's cooking dinner today, Bob? Me or you? You. <laughs> oh, big one. Look at him jumping over there, huh? Oh, there's one, Bob. Back in action, buddy. It's a nice silver one, too. Bob and I have been very lucky to be able to hunt and fish in many parts of Canada. And when I was out in Bob's stomping grounds, there was always some great hunting and fishing. But I just have to believe that this is one of the best days we ever spent with a rod and reel. I don't think Bob will give me any argument at that point. A beautiful fish, eh? Watching one of these fish swim away really does something for my heart. But now it's lunchtime. And since we're in the east, I guess it's my turn to do the cooking. No, I don't want that piece. What do you mean you don't want that piece? You never said that to me when I'm up in the Rocky Mountains. You want this piece or that piece. This is my frying pan. <laughs> I want that piece because it come off the tail and there's no bones in it. Oh, is that right? That's right. Well, only you would know that. There you go, buddy. 
Well, Bob, we fished and hunted a lot to get together across the country. British Columbia to Yukon. And it's been such a treat to come up to Labrador together. We've been fishing at Char Lake. It's owned by Last Frontier Fishing Lodges in Labrador, Canada. And if you're going to come up in this country, look them up. And we'll get some of this way. Bob? Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we take you to the Restigouche River in New Brunswick, Canada, with my good buddies, Jimmy Flynn, and from the Restigouche region, Alan Madden. They don't even have their lines in the water, and I'm uh, anxious. Any bites yet? Restigouche is good, but not that good. Okay, um, well, we're just watching you here. We're about to go take a snooze, so we'll uh, just let us know, okay? We got the walkie-talkie turned up full, so just in case uh, you do need to uh, Get the camera going, we will be sleeping in the van. Well, it didn't take Jimmy very long to hook his first fish. So Jimmy's had this on, not a word of a lie, for about 10 minutes. Sometimes it'll take 10 minutes, sometimes it'll take a half an hour. It's really the fish who decides that uh, for the first part of it. And there's only two things that are gonna happen. Either you're gonna let it go, or it's gonna break off. I get the bag by old salmon. Oh, look at that. That's a big, long one. Once it sees us, though, it's gonna take off. Man, my arms are getting sore. Holy. <laughs> 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 Holy okay. <laughs> we said it was great fishing here, but Apparently, uh, this is why we got to use to pull, pull them in. Man, the size of that tail. Ooh. He's gone now. He, 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 he. He's getting tired. <coughs> Don't the time too much. Saw me, it took off like a dart. He's gone down river now again. Have fun. <laughs> you saw you and us, <laughs> now I got to, oh, I broke off. Wow, you and your net. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get blamed. <laughs> the bigger one, yeah. <laughs> There's three sizes. Ooh -hoo. Just before we were about to leave, this guy hasn't been here all day. Two or three casts, bang. He's got himself a big salmon. Spring salmon. Oh, look at the colors on that. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, that's an Atlantic salmon. Beautiful fish. Yeah. Félicitations. Yo. Nice release. He's ready. Get a little water through the gills. They do uh, feel a bit of shock, but he's gone. Full of life again. The rest of Gush River in New Brunswick, Canada. Thanks for joining us on The Fishing Musicians. We'll catch you next time. Visit us online at The Fishing Musicians. That sucked.